President. President, pursuant to Standing Order 23.29, I lay on the table a report from the Legal and Social Issues Committee on the inquiry into children affected by parental incarceration, including appendices. I further present transcripts of evidence and I move that the transcripts of evidence lie on the table and the report be published. The question is that the transcripts of evidence lie on the table and the report be published. Those opinions say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it, Ms Patton. President, I move that the Council take note of this report. And this, this is a really important report, and it's a report that, you know, I think just, you know, fills me with, with um, the sense of privilege that we have in this place. And, and I'd like to, before I speak to the report, I'd really just like to note that a number of the very important people that were part of creating this report are, are here in our chamber today. And these are people who had lived experience of incarcerated parents. And I'd just like to welcome to the chamber Holly Nichols, Rachel Hambleton, Clarissa Allen, and also Glenn Fairweather, who's the general manager of the Prison Fellowship. Um, they, they really helped make this report the report that it is today. I'd also, before I f forget, um, like to thank all of the, the staff that worked on this report. This report is, um, is a really special report. So I'm really grateful for the work and dedication of the team, and that was Lillian Topic, Megan Murphy, Kieran Crow, Joel Hallahan, Jessica Westcott, and Kat Smith, and I just thank them so much for this report. Because this report looks at a hidden group of, of children, children where there is, no one has line of sight on these children. These are the children of parents who've been incarcerated. And right now, there's about 7,000 children whose parents are in prison in Victoria. And no department, as we found in this report, has line of sight on them, has any care for them, whether that's when the police arrest their parents, whether that's when their parents go before um, the courts, whether that's when their parents are then in the correction system. No one is seeing these children. Well, we saw them and we heard from them. And it was, I'd have to say, an absolute eye-opener. You know, we must protect these children. And we, you know, we are signatories to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. And these children are protected under that convention. Yet we haven't done enough. And we know that when their parents are incarcerated, that they can experience disruption to schools, isolation, stigma, the effects of a reduced family income, housing insecurity, and sadly, many may be incarcerated themselves. Now, that's not a given, but we heard from some of those children who are adults now that fear constantly lives with them. And I'd have to say that what, what I'm particularly ashamed about is the number of Aboriginal children that are taken into care as a result of their parents being incarcerated. In fact, Aboriginal children are losing their parents at a greater rate than they were last century when we were removing them from, our fa from their families. Um, this is of immense concern to me and it should be of immense concern to all of us. But there are things that we can do and I think this report shines a light on that. We make nearly 30 recommendations. And this is about, you know, certainly, look, if we wanted to fix this problem, let's fix inequality and disadvantage in our society. And obviously, that is something that we at the Legal and Social Issues Com Committee have heard time and time again, whether that was spent convictions or whether that was the justice inquiry, that those are the main causes of people entering into our correction system and being incarcerated. Um, but I think you know, we need to allow our courts to consider dependent children. You know, we're locking Aboriginal women up at, this, at an alarming rate at the moment. And many of them, in fact, most of them have children. Now, we're not locking them up because they're violent or a risk to society. We're locking them up for non-violent crimes, 
generally related to disadvantage and poverty. And I think we can rethink that and I think we can do far better in that area. So that would be around rethinking sentencing. That would be, I, you know, some of my committee members may not agree with me, but I also think it's about rethinking bail. Uh, it's about rethinking what we do with parents. You know, when we spoke, and also then rethinking about how we maintain that connection, that family connection. We know that family connections is the biggest protector against um, crime. So I, I urge all members to read this. And I want to say to the people in this chamber today, thank you. We see you. We hear you. And we must act on this. Um, this report will be your legacy.